In this video, I want to further explain what is meant by overfitting. So we're going to imagine that we've got some data on two variables, x and y, and just illustrated here by these crosses here. And suppose that what we're trying to do is we're trying to build a model to predict y. So the simplest possible model that I could build would be to completely disregard the x variables. And so I could just say, whatever the value of x, all I'm going to do is I'm going to predict the mean value of y that we obtain in our sample. But it looks like we could do slightly better than just predicting the sample mean of y if we take the variation in x into account. So what we could do is we could fit a linear model indicated here by a sort of pink line. And so whatever value of x we have, all we do is we sort of draw a line up from that value of x up to our mauve line here or our pink line, and then we find the value of y that that corresponds to. So that would there be our prediction. So for clarity, this pink line is of the form y equals alpha plus beta x, whereas this more simple model is just that y is equal to y bar. A more complicated model would be to include further polynomial powers of x. And if we do so, perhaps if we include enough of the terms, enough of the polynomial terms, we can actually fit our data perfectly. So this red line here might be an equation of the form y equals alpha plus beta 1 x plus beta 2 x squared plus beta 3 x cubed, etc. And because we've included all these other terms, that's allowed us to fit all of the variation in our data. So which of these three models should we prefer? You might be tempted to say that the red line, because it fits our data perfectly, is the best model. But would this actually be the case? Well, actually, it wouldn't be, because the idea here is that the red line is fitting the noise in our data rather than the signal. And what does that mean manifestly? Well, the idea is that if we were to predict a value of y based on the red line, so suppose we've got a, a, an x value down here, and then we follow it up to the red line, and that means that we predict a y value which is here, then the idea is that that predicted value of y will actually be a worse prediction than if we used the simpler linear model, in which case we would go up to a sort of y value which was here, and we'd get a prediction that was somewhere like this, so y hat star, or y hat prime rather. The idea with the red model is that essentially it fits the noise in our data, not the signal, which means that it generalizes very poorly to other data sets. The pink line, the mauve line, is more robust to the sort of sampling noise that we have in our data. And I think that in this case, we would prefer the pink line to the more simple model where we just predict the sample mean each time because it does look like there is some sort of linear relationship between x and y here. But it's certainly, the relationship between x and y certainly isn't that which is captured by the red line. I mean, do we really believe that if we increase x from here to here, that actually the y value decreases? Similarly, do we then believe that that trend then reverses between this value of x and this value of x? It just doesn't seem to be a very logical model. So how can we choose between these three different models in more general settings? Well, the idea is that there are various measures of model fit which correct for the degree of complexity of your model. And it is these criteria that we're going to discuss in the next few videos.